here doing it again. Winter's coming and I wanted to do a video to kind of show what the farm looks like before the cold sets in, what's flowering, what's happening. So we're gonna walk around, play with Rex a little bit. Lost his Frisbee. Patanga tuba did really well and fruited a lot, but the rats like to eat the fruit. This is one of my best ones in a really good location. Just had a bunch of fruit, like I said, and most of it's gone. Imbe's doing real well. Looks like some flowers are coming out. I'm not gonna put captions on this video because I'm pretty lazy. You're gonna have to look it up. I'll try to repeat stuff and say it slow, but we're just kind of blazing through, looking at what's happening now, and I'm documenting everything to kind of show it before and after winter because this is as big and as nice as the trees are going to look before they get cut down by the cold hopefully it's not too bad of a winter patanga tuba up against the house bunch of them together all 20 of them planted together this let's talk about this real quick and i'll i'll, I'll go over to the greenhouse later and show you more luke's garcinia this has fruited before, and I think I cross-pollinated it to help it set fruit, but I don't know if the cross-pollination helped or not. And I, I thought I, I had one tree that was a male tree that only made male flowers, but now all three of the trees that I have are making female flowers and setting fruits. So I think some of these trees, they put off male flowers at first, but then later on they start to make female flowers. And I, that's my theory, but the ones that I thought were male are setting fruit and making androgynous flowers with both male and female parts. So I'm excited about that. This is the um, Myrcieria guaquiea. Is that right? Yeah. Myrcieria guaquiea. And it's flowering, but not as heavy as the strigipes, which I'll show you in a second. Let me move this bucket out of the way. This is a nice wheelbarrow. These trees are the same age. One just happens to be way taller than the other. And they're really strong and they do very well with the heat and the cold here. Before you know it, a fruit will come out and you won't even know it, but really pretty trees hold up really well. And then this is the strigipes. It's planted in a more open, exposed area, flowering a lot more right now. Lots of flowers on it. The flowers smell really good. New growth is really pretty. You see it died back really bad from the freezes we had last year in the upper 20s, I believe. Really knocked it back, but didn't kill it. See how it recovered. And it used to be twice as tall. I see some dieback spots on it where some branches just wanna die back like this one who knows what happened here but I see some some die back I'll see if I can break that off so what I do is just find the dead pieces and bust them all who knows why it's broken or why it's dying I'm sorry but sometimes you have little sections of die back you can graft this tree onto uh, Myrcieria glazioviana the common yellow Jabuticaba the fruits on this are pretty small and the seed is pretty small and the skin is thin and it has a really good flavor, kind of citrusy. And these over here are very similar too. Kind of citrusy and papaya flavored, uh, like a yellow Jabba de Cabo if you've ever had it. All right, the lemon drop mangosteens are fruiting really well right now. And there's not a lot of other fruit. Jabba de Cabos are starting to flower like crazy too. I love the way these taste. Kambuka, looking good. No fruit on it. Saburai planted. Sounds like a chicken in here. Oh, peach white owl. He's over here cleaning up some, some dust. Look at this grafted red Jabba de Cava. I'm sure the rats will steal all that. 
Grimmel, Sabra hybrid, I think. Anomaly, grafted tree. It's got some flowers coming hard to show though. Let's see if I can get in there. Another anomaly. This one got hit by the cold pretty hard and, and about two feet of it died off. A really tall one that doesn't flower a lot yet, but it is getting into the groove finally where I see some activity going on here. It's gonna flower pretty nicely, I think. It's flowered before, but never a lot. It's such a big tree. I've had others that are smaller fruit faster. Grafted Grimmel, looking really big up against the house in a really warm spot. It's flowered before, but I think it set one fruit and had one flower on it, and it's so old. It's because I grafted it from a scion that wasn't mature. Kambuka. No flowers on this one yet. This Kambuka fruited, it made a really nice fruit. Kambuka. There's that dang Achacharu that won't die. I thought it was dead, but it keeps coming back. I'll take care of it now that it refuses to die. So yeah, last winter had a bad time. White Jabba de Kaba grafted. Flowering. It had fruit on it, rats took it. Oh look, you can see the graft union. You see where it's grafted the two different color bark? where it's a Y shape, one that goes red to beige. See, there's a line right there where it's grafted, and there's the other line where it's grafted right there. It's like a offset Y, one side's taller than the other. That's kind of cool. You can definitely see that though. Woo! That's a nice tree, it fruited too, but not a lot yet. It's a ball. Talk about a ball. I missed that kick. Okay, what else we got over here? The Grimmel Grove. Oh, Cherry of the Rio Grande, looking good. They like this time of year, the heat. They don't like the heat too much, so they look good. Grafted Calicina, some Calicina seedlings. This is the one that makes the nasty kind of fruit. Cherry of the Rio Grande. Gonna be looking good next year, I hope, but this was a really rough year. Too hot, too wet for the cherry of the Rio Grande. Grimmels look really good. And I bet you they're gonna flower like crazy next year. But they're trying to do it right now. So we gotta kinda keep them happy through the winter. I see a lot of peeling. Look at all this old bark coming off. That's a good sign. This, this is from the greenhouse with the irrigation water overhead. All that, that mold and fungus kind of shit that was on the bark is coming off, which is a, a really good thing. Means they're just expanding and expanding, expanding and expanding in all the directions that they can grow. Keeps on expanding and expanding in all of the directions it can whiz. It's like when you go to the beach and you get a sunburn. You go out and you pick, you pick, you pick. Oh, I went to be here. That's a keeper. Okay. Yeah, these look really good. Some of this still needs to peel off. You see that old nasty bark? It's gonna flake right off and have beautiful bark underneath. See, this one's all peeled up already. See, this one's clean. Oh, it's got a ton of flowers coming too. It's gonna be hard tonight to keep these from uh, getting messed up, you know, the flowers over the winter. But look at this. The red Jabba de Cabo Grove is really, 
It's really going crazy, actually. And it's too late in the season to be going this, to be going crazy like this. It's gonna be hard for me to keep these happy. Like if we have a warm winter, I'm good. But if not, oh, too bad. They're all doing a heavy flowering. A lot of them over there. There was a dead possum in here the other day. Chickens turned it into a rug. There he is. I don't know what killed him. I didn't kill him. And I'm sure it wasn't poison because they're immune to any kind of poison. But he sure stinks like crazy. So that's that. The red Jabri Cabo Grove looks really good. We had that one tree die. Let's go look at that tree that died. I think the last time I cut this was in that video. Maybe one more time I weeded it. One more time. Ooh, look at this tree going nuts. This little guy. Look at that. That's cool. Dead branch, pull that out of the way. Oh, look, there's a, look who's, some fruit. There's the dead tree. Let's see if it's, oh my goodness. Don't call it a comeback. It's not dead. I just, I didn't give up on it. I just kind of, we'll see if it lives, but it's trying to live. I think it's, it's going to die anyway, but we're not going to pull it out. We're going to just let it sit here. Like the heat got to it. Had such a bad, bad summer and winter. Really harsh growing season. These are the anonas I planted in that video. They did really well. This one's leafed out a little bit. Even though the hurricanes tore it apart. That was the one we just planted. I see there's fire ants at the base, which is a good sign actually, because it means it's nice and dry over here. Um... This one's doing really well. It got leaned over a little bit for a storm. Your fire ants there. Look at that. Nice and dry. I gotta kill them, actually. Wish an armadillo would come eat that. Do you know that's a good dry spot? Grumachama seedlings. This is the same age as all the others. Look how small it is. Same age as this one. It's called erythrocarpa, like a red type. I'm not going to look at every tree, but I'm just going to breeze over some that I think are cool. This is a Plinia oblongata, grafted tree. They do really well. Really strong tree. Really impressed by that. We just planted this um, guava. It's like Psidium sessiliflor. I forget the name. A Stridiliatilum or something like that. Someone's got to help me out with that in the comments. Well, I might, I'll put the name to this in, in the caption, but... I have three of these and they're really strong and I just planted one out and it's gone through the hurricane and we're going to see how strong it is though in the ground if it can last. Yellow Grumachama really doing its thing. Such a strong beautiful tree. Getting to be 12 feet tall maybe. Oh it's hard to see with the contrast and all that but let's take a look at the bark. That's always fun to look at. I love the bark on it. Absolutely. Uh, 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 that one don't want to come off. Yeah, I love that. I bet you when it gets bigger too, it gets smoother. When the tree gets really big, it'll be like that, like smooth. But this is like a juvenile tree still. There's old buddy. Yeah, these are these Grumachama. Erythrocarpas. This is um, Eugenia Itaguahiensis, which is a really strong tree. Fruits aren't the best, but it's fun to grow. I recommend it. It's just a nice one to have. It's a dwarf species, really strong. You can graft it onto Grumachama. I've got four of them here. The ones in full sun don't do as well as the ones kind of off on the side. This one did really well. Look at this tree. Tall. It's probably 12 years, 10 years old by now. And I've had some really good crops on them. The birds steal it. 
Get more of these grumachamas. I want these to fruit because I can start grafting them. Once I can confirm that the flavor is really good, I can start, you know, selling seeds and, and grafting them. But these are supposed to be top notch. The um, erythrocarpra, I guess, red grumachama. Okay. Some of these. Oh, look at this is a plinia that's always made a little tiny fruit. It's like a red mutant, a red hybrid maybe. We're gonna have so many hybrids this year. Look at the flower all the way down to the root. I love it when they do that. That's awesome. Anyway, so only made little tiny fruits. I imagine we'll have a lot of hybrids coming out of here this year. Here's this sapucaya seedling that flowers like crazy and it makes little tiny fruit so far. Almost not even worth eating. I might have to dig this tree up and relocate it, but it's a Plinia fetrantha seedling, Sapucaya. Now, on the other hand, this is a Rosa de Pescos fetrantha seedling here. You can't really see it because of the contrast, but this made some fruit on it out of nowhere, and I didn't see them, and the, and the animal stole it. But they were a nice size compared to my other seedling. This, one, this tree's really nice. We're gonna keep an eye on it. I was really impressed by the size of the fruit that it made. A nice 12 pack of fruit out of nowhere. So, there's that Sabra we stood up from the last storm. This storm blew it the other way and you can see the things are loose now, but it stands straight up. This tree got straightened out. I love this tree. I think it's a Grimmel hybrid, Grimmel Sabra most likely. But I really am waiting for it to flower. Red Jabuticaba is fruiting very well. They're all over the property. Ow. Bactris Setosa, the Tusum palm tree. Thorny as hell, I don't even want to get close to that. Looky here, variegated grumachum. I tried to graft some of these. I don't know where the grafts went, but I need to graft some more. Look at that, I just love the colors. The colors on that, like blues. Fred's alive and well, thank God. Hey buddy. Anomaly grafted, trying to put off a couple little flowers as we get into this cold. Trio. Cashews, not dead yet. There's that uh, Anona Sal's Manii. We had to lay it down through the storm, but it did really well. And it's 12 feet tall, easy. It had a flower on it, but the flower, it didn't set. It didn't set anything. Look how clean the graft union is on this. When you graft it onto Anona Montana, that is the preferred root stuff. That's a clean graft, but you can't even really tell it's been grafted. Oh, Miracle Fruits, doing well. ESALQ is a heavy fruiter. This thing's already fruited three times or so this year. It's a really heavy fruit and tree. It's in a 25 gallon pot. I think I'm gonna plant that thing out pretty soon. Oh look, Scarlet. Just imagine the hybrids if a bee went from tree to tree to tree. It's what happens. You're gonna get, the seeds that come from here are just bound to make something new. It just, it's just what happens. I was at John Kimber's house a couple years ago and he gave me a bunch of seeds and I planted them. Everything that came up looked like nothing he had. He handed me seeds from uh, Sabra and all the seeds that came out didn't look anything like Sabra. So I had to sit there and say to myself, uh, this is a Fuang Tung, by the way, doing really well. 
I had to say to myself, well, all these seedlings don't look like Sabra. What does he have fruiting? And all he had flowering at the same time was Grimmel and Sabra. And then so all of the seedlings that came up, they were looking like trunk of flora more than anything. And he didn't have trunk of flora fruiting. I knew that for a fact. So you can get some really wacky looking stuff. All that needs to happen is the wind or the bees, they pollinate it and things happen. You'll notice the seedlings coming up looking like nothing you've had. These are the black sapotes. I think they're getting almost ripe. Yeah, that one could probably be picked, but I'm waiting. I'll just wait until it gets colder. That one's getting a little softer, I felt that. This is a seedling, it was called like giant moss mint or something, I forget, or flying saucer. I, I forget the forget the name of it, but I collected it years ago. I don't think it's quite ready. There's that trunk of flora seedling that Toppy dug up for me. Ever since they put in this new pond, it seems to be a little happier, but I've tinkered with the idea of just digging this thing up because it really would, it did so much better in a pot than in the ground. And it would be pretty easy to dig up, so we might dig that tree up. Another Garcinia lemon drop mango seed, seedling making some nice fruit. This one's got a really thin skin. It's a good fruit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely more tart than the other one I just ate. This is the um, Island Gold Carambola. I got it from Wayne Clifton. Rest in peace. It hasn't fruited too well for me, but it has flowered and fruited a little bit. All right, I'm gonna cut the camera off. We'll be back in the greenhouse in a second. Here we are in the greenhouse. Stuff's looking really nice this time of year. It's a lot cooler. It's just rare. Near the area, we gotta figure out the name on that. I imagine it could fruit anytime. The Rolinia, I had to hit this with a pesticide to kill the ants on it, and it, it just helped tremendously. The, that, the, the tree was just suffering, and the, the, every flower was covered with this like mealy bug, white aphid type of stuff. It was crazy. One treatment of the Tal Star really did it, but who knows what kind of poison I'm getting now. I got one fruit off the tree, it was really good. It's fruited a lot before, but once the ants got on it, it was just, nothing would set. But I'm looking for any fruit set on it now. I think it's in like a 50 gallon, maybe a 45, 50 gallon pot, grafted tree. See the flowers used to be covered with these bugs, these white bugs. Now we got spiders on it. He's a good spider. Let's look close at that, that's pretty. Look at the colors on that. What kind, of, what kind of bug you think that is? What kind of spider? All right, let's go back there. <laughs> okay. Look at this grafted anomaly tree. Let's get a closer look. It's one of the big ones they kept in a pot. The suckers, you gotta take these suckers off. He tries to do that every once in a while. There's the, the rootstock and then look at the bark. How gnarled up it is, we'll get close. That's how you can tell that the anomaly is unique. The gnarling. And it's just about to start to go crazy and flower a lot. I mean, it's kind of in a dormant mode right now where it's waking up. Look at these anomalies here, another one kind of waking up a little bit. Nothing crazy on it, but love the way they peel. This one's going nuts here. Not nuts, but got a nice bit of flowers going on it. A little guy in a little pot. The one that's most root bound probably. Here's your variegated Sabra. 
So I'm probably going to sell that tree. Look at these scarlet. The animals steal this every time. I almost need to pull it inside that cage. But the scarlet seedling. Doing really well. Okay. Look at the rats do. See the rats? They take and they cut the branches and they prune it to their desire for their nest. They line their nests with the branches, but this has been rat pruned, this tree. I wish I knew what kind of tree this was. Now that the rats pruned it up, I can't even tell you what the hell that is. It looks so much different. This tree needs to be moved. It's the one I call Jade. It makes a little white fruit and it flowers a lot, but it doesn't fruit too much. Got a really funky growth habit. The fruit's pretty tasty, but it hasn't fruited a lot. A little hybrid here. I think this is a red Grimmel hybrid that's always been real weird looking. It's only made tiny fruit though. It's been real disappointing as far as the fruit size on it, but I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on it and let it fruit a little more and give it a chance. You can't, you can't judge a, a tree by its first fruits. Lemon drop mangosteens for sale on the website now. This is a really nice crop coming in. The fruits are beautiful. And luckily they're not getting stolen by the animals, but this is the one. Just loaded. Gorgeous fruit. Oh, they're gonna be great, eh? It's perfect. The cool weather I think helps it have a nice flavor. Oh, no bugs on it. I don't have to hand wash it. In years before, you know, crops before I had to hand scrub because it had the city mold and the aphids. This is grade A right here. Really exciting. That's for sale on the website now. I'm listing it five boxes at a time, but damn, I better start picking it now or it's gonna get stolen. Gonna get stolen. Anyhow, look at the sunburn from the hurricane when it ripped off the plastic. It sunburned my tree. Such a beautiful tree. All right, let me walk over here. Oh, that rusted pole I stepped on just gave out. This is your Garcinia Gardneriana. I sold some of these grafted on the website. Really pretty tree. Just love the way it looks, the way it grows in that shape, but it's it's too tall to be planted in the, in the ground in here. It's gonna be kind of a, a nightmare to have it in here, but I'll just prune the hell out of it and bend it and, and pray a little bit. Yeah. Red jabuticabas have been fruiting really well in here. I just picked a little bit of fruit off of here, off the trees in here. Grafted lemon drop mangosteen looking really good. They stay so nice and low. I mean, those were taken from upright branches from that over their tree. It just, it, from the mother tree, it just grows like this, really flat. So another one I just grafted, doing really well. That actually fruited already. Yeah, look at this crop on the red. Hopefully the rats let me have it or the possums or whoever's been stealing it. And what I really want to end this video with is right over here. The Luke's Garcinias, I have them in big pots. And I could have swore one was a male. It was this tree that was supposed to be the male tree. Well, it makes both male and female flowers. It's got the most beautiful colored leaves love the leaves on it and then look it's got all this action take a closer look at the flowers see that's fruit set doesn't mean they're gonna hold on but it's got it's got male and female parts and there's lots of flowers still coming on it all over not a ton but a lot let's see this is a, a male flower for sure male flower no ovary so it makes male and female flowers. There's an ovary right there. Very cool. And then the one right next to it, look what it's doing it too. That's a female flower. And then we got some fruits setting there. Gotta zoom out. And here.
Glad I didn't sell these trees. I'm holding on to these trees. There's some fruit that I'll, I'll hopefully be able to sell some fresh fruit on these eventually. And I gotta put them up in bigger pots even from here, but I think they can stay in these pots another year at the most. And then we'll try to step them up into the next size container. Let me get you a better view of the size of that tree. I think they're like, you know, 15 years old or more. I believe so, they're 15 years old. I could be wrong. This is one we have in a pot. We're waiting to try to get it to fruit. And it stays flooded at the bottom like that. And then it just looks like a rat. Like a rat's been leaving his scraps in there unless I did that. Take a look at this yellow jabbity kaba. I think I've got it sold for 300, but that's a pretty good deal. It was supposed to be a giant form, but I don't think it's a giant form. It's just, it's a good fruit, but it's not the giant one. It's gonna be loaded with flowers, absolutely loaded. Look at the trunk on it. Okay, dudes. Dude, one more time. First of all, you better learn how to speak. I'm not man, I'm not dude. I'm not man, I'm not dude. Really appreciate you being here for me. Pickering mango in a 25 gallon pot. I'm growing that, growing that one to keep the fruit on it. I like pickering a lot. You gotta have a mango, you gotta have one. There's my sunburned trees coming out of it real well though none of them died from that see the new growth new growth don't be worried about a little sunburn see people probably got a sunburn tree and we're worried about it but see they come right out of it there's these guavas the other ones i kept and i just repotted these we got to find the name on these some type of guava these are going nuts eugenia stipitata I actually got a fruit off of this one here. I did pull a fruit off of this one, the Sororia. A raccoon pulled it down for me, but I did get a fruit just a couple days ago. It was really good. I'm hoping this gets loaded with fruit. I really would like to get more fruits off of these so I can sell them or make some juice out of them. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a long, boring, update as to what's going on uh yeah really praying that this winter is an easy one but we'll see we just take it as it comes we're going to be protecting the trees with frost cloths overhead irrigation greenhouses whatever it takes thanks again for watching see you next time